There's this really useful mod on Android that lets you add an undo and redo button to the context menu. And as you can probably guess, it lets you undo anything you just typed or re-add anything you erased. The mod that makes this possible is called undo and it works like a charm, even on non-rooted devices. Here's another one. You know how some apps stop you from being able to take screenshots or screen recordings by just blacking them out? Well, a module called Expose Disable Flag Secure lets you bypass these restrictions. That way you can capture anything you'd like no matter what you're doing in the app. It works in password managers like Dashlane, specific browsers like Firefox when using incognito mode. It works within Telegram's secret chat, Reddit's anonymous browsing mode, and much more. The only apps it won't work in are those that are encrypted by something called DRM, which basically stands for Digital Rights Management. It's used mainly by popular streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime, and they use this so that videos get encrypted at the hardware level, bypassing any software features like screen capturing, thus making it way harder to crack unless you're rooted. But aside from those type of apps, Expose Disable Flag Secure works just fine unlocking any screenshot capturing, even on unrooted devices. Matter of fact, if you join our Patreon, you can also unlock these sweet new widgets we just created. They not only fit in really well with our latest wallpapers, but they can make any setup look fantastic. I'll leave a link down below so that you can join the team. Now, unfortunately, both mods I just discussed require the LSBOS app to work. But luckily for us non-rooted users, we can instead turn to LSPatch to force them to work. I already showed this app off in my previous video, Best Modded Apps in 2023, and if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to check it out because you'll discover even more amazing modded apps. But I thought I'd make a part two since a lot of you guys enjoyed that video. If you're not aware, Ellis Patch basically lets you inject an Ellis Posed or Exposed module into any app you have installed to get it working on your non-rooted phone. It's like adding a secret ingredient to the final dish. But it doesn't work with every mod out there, or every app. Only a few of them work, and in this video, I'll show you all the LSBOS and Exposed modules that you can get working on your non-rooted device. And by the way, no other YouTuber has made this video or even showed off the LS Patch app. So drop a thumbs up, because finding this list wasn't easy. It took a lot of trial and error and frustration. But still, I did it for you guys so that you don't have to go through my pain. Towards the end of the video, I'll even show you how to enable Alice Patch and how to use it. If you're multilingual, you're going to love this next mod because it lets you translate individual apps to almost any language you'd like. It's called All Trans, and it uses Google's translation service to replace all the text inside an app with another language in real time, similar to how Google Chrome translates those foreign websites. Now, I'm not saying it's perfect, Sometimes the translation will take a few seconds to render, especially if you're scrolling through a feed. And some apps will get translated better than others. For example, the Reddit app was translated into any language without a problem. But other apps like Threads or Instagram didn't play that nicely. For Threads, I had to enable extra settings within all trans, like an aggressive mode and a scroll long translated text option just to get it to work. For Instagram, I had to restart it a few times and navigate randomly throughout the app until it eventually translated a few items here and there. And for some apps like Twitter, it just didn't want to translate anything besides a few menus, no matter what I did. So each app you translate is a hit or miss and you'll start to see this trend when using more LSBOS mods. Orange is another fantastic mod because it lets you choose the screen orientation for each app. And for some, it even stays in that position no matter which way you hold your phone. So what I did is I forced my file manager app, known as Solid Explorer File Manager, to always open in landscape mode. That way I can transfer files between different folders much more quickly. I also did this for my favorite game, Beat Runner, so it always opens in the direction I like it to. Sure, it's not the most groundbreaking mod you can use, but I can still see it coming in handy for some folks, especially if you use a tablet. And again, if you're not rooted, it unfortunately won't work with every app out there. For Instagram, there's this mod called IG Experiments, which lets you enable a secret menu called Developer Options. To find it, I just long press on the home button and a new menu will appear. Within it are hundreds of tools that Instagram developers use to improve their app. 
Not sure why you would want to reveal this menu, but you have the option to by downloading and using the IG Experiments mod. Just keep in mind that if you use LS Patch to enable this mod, you'll need to download this older version of IG Experiments, version 279, and you also need to use this older Instagram update with the same version number, 279. I'll leave both links right below the like button. But I actually talked to the developer on GitHub and he said that he will try to fix this LS Patch issue in a future update soon, so you won't need to use an older Instagram version. Just keep an eye on the releases page. Now before I move on to the next mod, as most of you know, AI is taking the world by storm. But with so many AI apps out there, it can get pretty overwhelming to know which is the best one to use. Recently though, I stumbled across Heyo AI, and I'm glad I did, because it's got every AI tool you can possibly think of. In fact, it's such a great app that I even asked Heyo to sponsor this video, and they did. To give you a taste, Heyo integrates AI chat, artwork creations, the latest news surrounding artificial intelligence, and more. To get a bit more detailed, AI chat is what most of us are used to. You ask it anything, and it should spit out an answer. But things get really interesting because Heyo lets you switch between different language models, including ChatGPT 3.5, GPT-4, Claude, Bing, StableLM, and any other open source AI engine. And if you're unsure what to ask, no problem. Heyo provides 300 shortcut commands to help you get started. With AI art creation, it also supports many different language models, so you can really change up the look and style of the picture you're trying to generate. And it creates images really fast too. I even love that you can upload a photo to have the AI change it depending on your request. It's really mind-blowing stuff. With the AI library and news tab, you'll find tutorials and the latest news about this topic and a lot more. As I said, Heyo is the ultimate app to let you get involved in the world of AI, and you can download and start using it right now for free on your Android, iOS, or computer through the top link in the description. The possibilities are endless with Heyo AI. If you're still one of the few who use Facebook, there are also a couple of mods I've wanted to show you. Well, they're actually for Facebook Messenger, but I'm sure you're still using that as well. This first one is called Messenger Pro, and it is really powerful because it basically enables God mode. Let me show you what I mean. Inside any conversation, I can swipe inwards on the right edge of the screen to bring up this floating menu that lets me enable extra goodies that no one else has. You'll probably need to switch to the three button nav bar instead of the gesture navigation, because otherwise you won't be able to swipe in that hidden menu. But once you do, you, you can do things like enabling message formatting, meaning I can make any text bolded, italic, crossed out, underlined, etc. And the other person in the conversation can also see these changes. I just need to add these extra characters at the beginning and end of all the words I want to format. The second button in the menu lets me prevent the scene indicator so that no one knows I read any of their messages. I can also stop the typing indicator only on my end so that no one knows I'm typing. Then I can attach any file format to the conversation, including PDFs, audio files, etc. I can also lock specific conversations with the fingerprint, and there's so much more where that came from. As I said, it's a very powerful mod, and surprisingly, it's really easy to enable. You don't even need to inject the mod with the LS Patch app, because the developer has already done that for you. All you need to do is download and install his patched APKs off GitHub, and upon opening the app, you should see those extra new perks once you log in. Okay, another great messenger mod is Chat Head Enabler. And as you can probably guess from the name, it lets you bring back chat heads. Or it even lets you switch between chat heads and bubbles. If you're not sure what that means, uh, these are floating circles that appear whenever you receive a message. And tapping them lets you see the entire conversation to respond quickly. But the difference is that chat heads is a feature created by Facebook that lets you easily interact with other conversations on Facebook. While Bubbles is a native Android feature that lets you track all of your most recent chat conversations from any app out there, not just Facebook. So I guess it comes down to personal preference. And the best part is that you don't actually need to use the Ellis Patch app as well to enable this mod because the developers have their own version called MRV Patch Manager and it's a lot simpler to use. It'll just make you install the mod within the app, then you hit patch, and it'll have you uninstall and reinstall Facebook Messenger. 
It's that easy. Now I already reviewed these two upcoming mods in my most recent videos, so some of you may already know about these, but I'll quickly go over them anyway. They're called Tweefucker and Snap Enhance. Tweefucker, yes that's the actual name, is a fantastic mod for Twitter, or X, that lets you remove all the unnecessary crap inside of it. Like all the ads, promoted tweets, suggested users, promoted trends, and much more. And even though the developer has decided to discontinue this mod, it still works on some older Twitter versions, like version 10.1, which was released on July 31st. Snap Enhance, on the other hand, is an excellent mod for Snapchat, and it's still actively being updated. When enabled, it adds a new gear on the top right corner of the chat page, and inside it, you get crazy exclusive features. It lets you log every message you receive, prevents red receipts, and hides the bitmoji so that no one knows that you hop into the conversation. You can remove time limits when viewing snaps, block all the ads, and more. So those are all the major LS Bose mods that you can get working on your non-rooted device right now through the LS Patch app. I know, it's not a huge list and there are way more exciting mods out there, but trust me when I say that these are the only mods you'll be able to get working on a non-rooted phone. I tried so many and these are the only ones that work properly, at least the most exciting ones. Practically every other mod out there has extra requirements like needing root access or needing to modify a system app or process, which unfortunately doesn't always work on a non-rooted device. But hey, if you find any more mods that work with LS Patch that I didn't show off in this video, feel free to share them with us in the comments. Anyway, let's talk about how you can properly enable and use LS Patch on your non-rooted phone. First things first, you must know that LS Patch usually doesn't work with the majority of Google apps or system apps. I've always gotten errors saying the signatures don't match up or the apps won't even open if it does install properly, so I'll save you that headache. On top of that, even if you do get an app to successfully patch with a mod, that still doesn't mean it'll work properly. There have been several occasions where I couldn't even get an app to boot up, even though the mod got injected without a problem. Remember, it's a hit or miss situation. Some apps work well with some mods, while other apps work better with other mods, and some apps don't want to cooperate at all. It is what it is. You also can't inject multiple mods into an app, so only one mod per app if you're not rooted. Lastly, if an app is consistently crashing due to a mod you injected into it, you can uninstall and reinstall it from the Play Store to have it working again. So there's always a fallback. Now that we got all the warnings out of the way, let's get into the nitty and gritty. First, you're going to need to download and install Ellis Patch and the module that you're trying to use. You can find all the download links to all the mods that we discussed in this video right below the like button. From there, you'll need to enable Ellis Patch with the Shizuku app. If you're unsure how to do that, I'll link a video within the cards where I showed off how to properly set it up. Once Shizuku has been enabled with an Ellis patch, we can inject an app with a mod. For this demonstration, I will try to inject the undo module, which I discussed at the beginning of the video, with Twitter. So the first thing I'm going to do is clear the data within Twitter and also uninstall and reinstall it. That way I can start with a completely clean slate. You should also do the same thing for any other app you're trying to mod, otherwise you may run into issues. Then with an LS patch, I will switch to the Manage tab, hit the plus icon, and it will have me create a new folder in my directory. So I'll do that and call the folder whatever I'd like. I called it LS patch. Then I'll tap on Use this folder and hit Allow. Then I will tap Select an installed app but if you have the APK for an app, you can do that instead. In this list, I will then search for Twitter or the app that you're trying to use and then select it. It'll jump me to this page in which I will then select portable, embed modules, and I'll choose the undo mod. Finally, I'll hit start patch and it'll begin the process of integrating the mod inside Twitter. Once it's done, I just hit install and that's it. I can open Twitter, log back into my account, and I should see the new undo mod in action. Unfortunately, if I want to update Twitter, I will need to repeat this process all over again. So what I usually do is I stop the auto update for that app in the Play Store. And that's how you use the Yellow's Patch app. Anyways, click this video right here if you'd like to see other great modded apps on Android, 
thumbs up if you downloaded at least one from this entire video or if you even learned something new. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!